appreciate it. 47 years later, you're finally seeing legal action. Yes, Shahan, it's another significant step uh, that we're closely awaiting um, to finally see Joe Rodriguez appearing in a court of law uh, in a democratic South Africa to face charges. Um, as was ruled by Judge Bali Motley at the reopening of the historic, uh, historical Timor inquest last year. Mm. And, uh, you know, once again, Shahan, um, as the family looks forward to tomorrow, at the back of our minds are all the other families throughout the length and breadth of this country who still eagerly await justice and closure for the brutal killing of their loved ones. You know, when you had the No Hao Teng High Court ruling saying that this was, in fact, a murder and not suicide, the family, of course, saying it was some sort of justice. Now, the possibility of someone being behind bars for this crime, that means something totally different, doesn't it? Yes, Shahan. I mean, look at the family. You know, we've been consistent that we want answers. Um, and in order for us to find closure, it's imperative that the former security branch oper uh, operatives make full confessions and full disclosures on their roles uh, leading to the uh, brutal death of my beloved uncle. And if this is not forthcoming, you know, then we have absolutely no other alternative, you know, but, but, but for the likes of George Rodriguez to face the full wrath of the law. And what would you want to see happen ultimately in this case? I know that you want to see someone behind bars for this uh, crime. Uh, what about other people connected to Ahmed Timol's death? Do you want to see all of that, all of those people brought to the courts, all of those people behind bars? No, no, we don't. You know, that's not our first preference, Shahan, to see them behind bars. You know, the doors of reconciliation from the perspective of the family has always been open. I mean, Joao Rodriguez had an opportunity at the reopening of the inquest last year to make full confessions and full disclosures. But he stuck to his version of 1972. And once again, you know, as he faces charges tomorrow, and we look forward to, a, to the dates to be set for the reopening of, his, of the charges against him, the door continues to remain open. But if he continues to, to stick to his version of 1972, which was that um, he attempted to save my uncle, who had darted across the table and jumped to his death from the 10th floor of the notorious John Foster Square police station, when there's imperative evidence indicating the contrary, then, uh, you know, we have absolutely no option but to see him at the age of 80 to face the full wrath of the law. And if that means him going to prison, you know, that is the choice that he has made. Mm. It's really good to hear you talk about reconciliation at a time like this. I think we need it as a country, don't we? Most certainly, Shahan. You know, it is, only, it is only the victims of families that still reach out their hands in many, many instances where people want answers. I mean, the family of Nokotula Similani still today want to know what happened to her. Her mother who is ailing and aged, desperately seeks answers. And security branch officers have appeared in the court of law since 2016. But due to court delays, have still not been charged. And, and, and the matter has, has, has proceeded. So as a country... I think it is imperative and the timing is absolutely perfect for the likes of Joao Rodriguez and the many, many other perpetrators who are responsible for these heinous crimes to come forward, make full disclosures, and to demonstrate to South Africans at this critical time of our, of our history since the dawn of democracy that we can have genuine and honest nation building, but that can only emerge when perpetrators take full responsibility and make full disclosures. On those very powerful remarks, thank you so much for your time. That was Ahmed Timol's nephew, MTR's Ahmed Kaji.